so hi guys so in today's video we would be talking about all about data in the previous video we actually talked about how data can change everything from the very initial stage to the ending stage hence in the previous video we also talked about the production production part in machine learning and uh, the whole pipeline stuff so if you haven't watched that video i would recommend you to go and watch that video so let's get right into it so in this video we would be looking at every aspect of data how important data is how to rearrange data how argumentation works the most important part the argumentation part so this is the notebook i would set the time to gpu so as a gpu has been set up I would first import these files that is the zip file, tar file, numpy, panda, cborn, tensorflow and matplotlib. I would simply run this and run anyways and yeah these libraries have got imported. So now we would download the two data sets that we would be using in this lab. The first data set is from the Kaggle cats and dogs and the second is the data set from the MLEP course from Coursera and uh, this is the production course so yeah we would be using this Caltech birds data set and we would be using some pre-trained models and training histories to make things a bit easier even though we won't be training in this video I would be giving you the link to this collab you can go and train because training take around 20 to 25 minutes and we don't have that much time for each video so yeah as the data set is getting downloaded you can see the cat this was a cats and dogs data set this was in a zip format dot zip and this is in dot tar format if you don't know about tar you can simply go and search dot tar extension and you would get to know about uh, the tar file so basically it's a, a unit archive format file open with uh, means in, in your local uh, device you can open it with the zip formats also not a problem so the data has got down downloaded in a collab notebook you can go here and just see you can see all the things uh, that have been downloaded dot tar dot zip so now you can see the story of data uh, let's you know the raw images in the data sets can be for in the following path as you can see content slash cats and dog this and this the base directory is this and as a side note these both data sets are available in tensorflow data sets if you want to search tensorflow you can see data sets cats versus dog and same with uh, the caltech birds data sets if i go and directly search this i guess the it would be available on tensorflow yeah this is the caltech data set so if you want to study both of these data sets in detail each and everything i would recommend you to go to tensorflow datasets website and look at this dataset this is been taken from the microsoft datasets as you can see and every in uh, in few days it, it it's being updated and this is the dataset which is uh, in, in when it comes to cats and dogs you must be knowing about this because we have used this in in a number of collab notebooks and uh, coming to this caltech usd datasets uh, with 200 bird species mostly north american total number of categories is 200 6333 images uh, so yeah it's it's also a good data set now coming down the next step is extracting the data into a directory of choice so we would be using this base directory in this case so cats versus data set is in zip file while the caltech data sets comes in a tar file So we would be using with zip file dot zip file and we would expect extracting it all extract all and uh, it would get extracted similar thing we would do just we would replace your zip file instead of ta uh, using tab file and we would be running this uh, as you can see once it gets updated so the cats and dogs data sets doesn't images no need for their processing as all the examples in the single class are located in one directory that is pet images uh, pet images slash dog pet images slash cat so <laughs> let's check how many each of them has so for that we always do base dogs directory base cats directory 
path join and the length of that path so if you see the path so yeah it's uh, it's like that to uh, it has around 12000 uh, images of uh, 12501 images of cat dogs and 12 similar of cat so if i go here this is the option that gives me to upload and if i go here this is the base directory where everything is being stored and the tmp file is the most famous place where all the data uh, we usually store if you look at the data this is the pet images and inside these pet images these are the images of cats and these are the images of dog so 12000 images obviously a big number now le le let's look at the bird data set we have go got an idea of the cat data set let's look at the bird images data set so this data set is commonly used to classify species of birds so there's a directory for each species you know so the so for that this records moving all birds to a single directory inside this pet images we would be making a directory for bird for like there was for pet images there was this for cat this was for dog so we would be defining a directory and simply for sub directory in this we would be defining the path and this and then we would be moving them there and also getting the images of birds so so there are 11788 images of bird and let's move down here so it turns out that there is a similar number of images you can see bird cat dog inside bird there are 11788 images a very big number so let's look at a quick image of each class we are trying to predict sample cat and we are going to take first image only you know it's quite often so this is the sample cat image and then would be coming the dog image and then the bird image if you want you can take a, another look i would simply do one here one here and one here i would just run it and there wouldn't be another image that is of sample cat image sample cat dog and yeah and this is the sample image bird image if you want to take a look at more bird images let's do five directly so yeah this is the image of birds so you know bird species is a very big species so there are a lot of species present so before training the model we will need to split the data into training and evaluation set so what usually happens is suppose this is your whole data set uh, yeah this is your whole data set now you can split it into two parts i would just use another color this is the training part and this is the testing part the evaluation part you can what i usually do is put 80 percent of data here and using 20 percent of data here now the question would arise in your mind that why can't we put 20 percent here and 80 percent here so the point is you want your model to learn more and after that once it has learned chances are there that it can predict these 20 20 percent very easily but if you get it give it 20 percent here and try to test on 80 percent chances are uh, that it won't perform that good like when it comes to 80 20 i guess the stability of model can be around 95 percent yeah 95 percent but when it comes to 2080 believe me it can be between 65 to 70 at max this would be the maximum number at that place so this is how uh, we split and uh, that is uh, with the data set between both training and evaluation set so we will run the next cell to create the directories of training and evaluating the training evaluation are tra train slash cat train slash dog train slash birds evaluation slash cat evaluation slash dog evaluation slash bird yeah i guess it's quite easy to understand i would just run this and once we are done with this i guess there would be a bit different things not for now yeah not at least for now so after that we would go here and let's define a function to move this will move percentage of images from the origin folder to a destination destination folder because we need images to get split it between training and evaluation part so this is the uh, part that is uh, the origin destination and percentage split this is the images that we need to split and all the destination folders so we would run this code now 
coming to the uh, data set split as i told you i usually do 80 to 20 but uh, here so we would move 70 percent of images to the training directory and we would you move 30 percent of images to the evaluation directory 0 0.7 0 0.7 0 0.7 so let's run this and yeah so this is what uh, we got because we already moved these images and the images which were left were directly moved to the evaluation directory so uh, something important to mention is that currently stands is some issues some images are corrupted and or have zero bytes so cats versus dog image uh, zip file include a .db file for each class that's need to be deleted uh, if you didn't fix this before training, you, uh, there would be uh, a bit, prob a bit, bit problem for you. So we would run the following bash code to uh, resolve these issues. We would find the data set in which size is zero uh, or, 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 or the or any image which doesn't have .jpg file .jpg extension at the end of that file, and it would remove that. So we would remove this and if we go down the first uh, command remove all the zero byte and the second one removes all the part which is not dot jpg because which is, which is not image so here we how many images did we have if we move forward uh, if i go up here there were around 12501 images of cats and dogs let's see how many were corrupted now if we run this again so around 4000 images no not exactly 4000 it's 2500 images around were corrupted of cats versus dog data sets so yeah and around 11000 images were for for birds same around almost same thing happens here around 2500 images of each set that is around 7500 images from all the three data sets are were a bit corrupted but that is only for training. If you add training and evaluation, things would change. So around uh, 30 to 40 images were like that, which were corrupted. So that, that, that's not a problem. We have re removed that. So let's look at an expected issue. Let's face the real first life, uh, first real life issue in the narrative. There was a power outrage on the office and some hard drives were damaged. As a result, the images has been erased. As a matter of fact, only 20% of the dog images survived. To simulate this scenario, let's quickly create a, a new directory called imbalance and copy all the only portions mentioned above for the each class so we would make this directory the imbalance directory and very similar to the one we used for copying we would uh, perform the copying part we would use only 20 percent of images as we said and 10 percent of birds <coughs> so for sorry for that and now we would run this this is the evaluation this is the training part and now we are creating another directory which is for a uh, 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 emergency case and we are copying only 20% of part for that. Now we would around this much image, around 750 images for training, uh, for evaluation, and 825 and 1700 images for training. <laughs> so this is how we got it. So for now, there is no quick or clear solution for accidental file loss. So you decide to keep and uh, go, keep going to train the model with the remaining images. So this is, was an optional case, you don't need to always do that. So let's go ahead and create a model architecture and define a loss function in optimizing performance metrics leveraging Kira's APIs. So this is a, a very easy model which is created using the convolution and max pooling layer. Uh, the activation function as Leru, uh, I mean, and the activation as softmax. We would just simply run this. And this is a simple image classification. And if you want to look at the uh, imbalanced model which would uh, we, this is a model we specifically created for the imbalanced data set this is not a model we created for uh, the data sets which is balanced so this is the layers you can see uh, there is a convolution layer there's a max pooling again convolution again, uh, again max pooling so yeah so for training the model you would be using keras image data generator so if you have watched my previous computer vision video i hope which you have watched we are, i have explained that all in detail so for from we would import that and if you are not familiar with all the operations of keras image data generator simply go on google and search keras uh, that is keras and yeah you would be good to go you can see all the operations that happens here this is the image data processing 
all the things which are available inside this function everything explained in detail you are good to go so we won't be using obviously everything here we would be using only few functions and uh, that we would be first defining image training data image generator we would be rescaling this we are not doing any image documentation here we are only rescaling it which is a must thing you know normalizing pixel values and then we are giving the target size batch size and class mode which is binary because you know this is a cats versus dogs data set this must be binary obviously because there is only two classes present but uh, there are around 11000 images belonging to three classes and 4000 belonging to three classes because we have got a bot data set also so let's do a quick sanity check to inspect both generators use the same labels for each class so i would simply run this and we go down here so labels for each class is uh, train data training generator as bird 0 cats 1 dogs 2 and validation are bird 0 cats 1 dogs 2 that's that that's pretty nice and let's load pre-trained model and history so uh, this we are going to read this particular file and i would just run this the imbalance history the imbalance model so after if you want to run this uh, if you want to uh, train this model you can go and run this i would just remove this so that you can see the plottings and uh, i would recommend you to do that for now i won't be doing it because it would take around 20 to 30 minutes for that and uh, we would simply see the results for now and if i plot you the results it would be something like this you can see the training accuracy and the evaluation accuracy you can see evaluation accuracy is pretty low uh, we won't we aren't expecting that at least uh, but this is it what it is so this is what you called uh, call as uh, if we have talk about this is known as overfitting because training accuracy is awesome but evaluation accuracy is really low but when it comes to your training and evaluation loss you can see things are a bit different evaluation loss is really really high and training loss is really really low so uh, overfitting is a clear example you can see here now uh, you can see from these two plots, it's quite the overfitting the training data. However, the evaluation accuracy may be pretty high. To be honest, not that much. It's okay. -ish. It's around, if you see, 85%. It's not that good, but yeah, you can expect that. So, yeah, we would move uh, move to the uh, scale and metrics library and see the available functions. We would run this. Use the validation generator to shuffle to shuffle to easily compute additional metrics we would shuffle all the data of evaluation part and you know just remember we are using this in the imbalance part it only has 700 images what can you expect from 700 images not that much for training and we would define the generators use the model to predict it and see the accuracy score so this would take i guess a couple of minutes so i would just stop this for now because we don't have that much time but you can definitely go and do that so imbalance class is the uh, we haven't run this because so it would be we would be skipping this for now now predicting cat for all images this is one you can give the printing the printing the accuracy but but the most important part is the valid is the data augmentation which we are going to talk about now we are going to train with complete data set we are going to going to create balance model and the create model we are going to say use the same model architecture all the layers that we defined nothing different in that but we have got to know one thing we have got to know one thing if i use this plan this was the part suppose this is the part which was giving us around 85 percent accuracy 85 percent accuracy and this is the incomplete data set this is incomplete data set now there would be another which would be complete data set Oh, sorry for that yeah complete data set let's see so the training data set we defined image data generator we are going to take whole data set so there are so many images 25,000 plus images we are going to get I guess awesome results for now we would use the pre-trained model in history as we downloaded it and use the validation generator to shuffle and accuracy versus balance we are not going to train again because it's going to take a lot of time and I would again stop this because it also is going to take around 20, 20, 20, 25 minutes and if we try to plot the balanced history you can see this is something we are getting don't just think it's pretty awesome it's around giving us uh, if I say 
it's giving us around 90% accuracy to be honor to be precise it's around 91 and I guess 6% increase is not a very small when it comes to such big numbers see increasing from around uh, 10 to 30 percent is not a very big thing because these are already very small number but when it surpasses 80 from 80 to 90 is a very big number very very big number because you have already surpassed 80 percent accuracy from here you need to jump to 90 percent so yeah now the most important part which is training the with data augmentation so augmentation images is a technique in which you create the new versions of images this i would explain in very detail suppose this is an image of a dog just imagine for now this is an image of a dog now what if <coughs> what if in future your model gets an image which was a bit darker which was a bit darker it has shades up here like this or what if you get an image which was pretty zoomed in it was something from here and what if your model gets only this part means cutting out this left part bit you get only this part this password cut out or you get only particularly this part what would happen then your model won't be able to predict it's pretty obvious and that is the reason we use data augmentation we would give our model the image data generator from here you can see this is image data processing pre-processing so what happens is i would just take you to the website image data generator simple as that keras and here you go image data generator so you can see a lot of things available here if i go down here the loading images function and yeah now coming to the part all the zoom part all the things part that happens you can see the image data generator pre-processing everything is available here so a lot of things are available if you want to see but for now we would be doing the rescaling which is must obviously and we would be doing the rotation range now what is rotation range you must be thinking so for uh, even though after i know i would recommend you even if you know to go to this website and search it for yourself for now i would just search it rotation uh, for sorry for that rotation range so you can see the rotation it decreases the range for random rotations <laughs> so even though it's quite clear from its name but still and similar to with shift range i would recommend you to stop this video here go to the website and check each and every parameter that i have mentioned here i would just take a pause the video for five seconds so i hope you have uh, visited the website e see each and every part in detail what is happening here so you can uh, you can apply a lot of uh, functions here i haven't used every function because i guess there are around 15 to 20 functions present here the brightness range the height shift range channel shift range fill mode uh, the rescale vertical flip horizontal flip i hope you understand what is vertical flip this is a straight image i would mark an arrow like this and what would vertical it would be something like this or it and in horizontal it would be something like this i guess something like this so yeah and what we are giving rotation rate width shift height shift because it's must the shear range the zoom range and the horizontal flip as true and uh, nothing else i guess yeah we are using binary class same data set and now i would run this and you can see from tensorflow uh, image processing you can see this is the static gen so we are doing the same thing here rescaling width shift range and iteration and everything is happening pretty same now if you want to see the argumented history i would just run the okay fine i haven't run the code yet i would just run it and make you see the result what are the results of this and these are the images that see you can see the transformation image zero this was the first image this was the second image don't you see this that horizontal shift and zoomed in and same transformation number three thing it, it, it's it's looking at uh, left direction now it was looking at right direction at that time so this is how the uh, image data processing work the data documentation and we would do it again vertical flip we would do vertical flip here as true also so you can see a lot of examples this was a bird like this this was a bird like this same bird different directions really easy for model to judge when it comes in real life situation 
so I would just do this for now and yeah I haven't trained it yet but just assuming what results it would give me so yeah coming to the result accuracy the evolution accuracy is pretty pretty high even though I haven't trained the model this is just a uh, the, the pre-trained model thing so uh, expect the accuracy to be to be data augmentation part to be of around data augmentation this would be around around 96 to 97 yes guys it's going to be between 96 to 97 so that's awesome i guess that's a really good accuracy and this was it for the video wrapping it <laughs> so we completed this particular collab uh, I have used this collab as a part of MLEP course from Coursera because this was the most awesome uh, lab I guess available online uh, so all the credits goes to them for this yeah explanation part is a pretty different thing so I would give you the link to this collab in the description section you can go and try it so thank you for watching the video thank you and have a nice day